Although the Azerite clergy will oft speak of the Legions of Chaos as a single malicious tide, nothing could be further from the truth. To those mortals and creatures that have sold their souls to Chaos, constant acts of malice, carnage, and violence are necessary to earn their Dark God's gaze. For every battle the ruinous tribes fight against Sigmar's allies, another is waged against their own tainted kind. Only a truly powerful champion can unify these hordes to a common purpose. And when they do, the realms tremble. Unusual as it is in our war-torn times, we find a consensus amongst our scholarly brethren in naming the greatest of warlords aligned to these foul powers, Archaon. Archaon the Everchosen, Archaon the Three-Eyed King, Archaon the Exalted Grand Marshal of the Apocalypse. He bears many monikers, and I dare risk saying will no doubt bear many more. He represents and serves the will of four of the five major Chaos Gods, although historically he was said to scorn the fifth of the gods, the Horned Rat. Dark whispers now circulate telling of a change in this relationship, suggesting Archeon may have also had some hand in the tides of vermin now sweeping our realms. Regardless, Archeon's might is such that he is considered second only to these ruinous powers. He has beleaguered our fair realms since time immemorial, and is said to have preceded even the realms themselves. Whilst many have sought to supplant him, arguably only one truly threatens his crown, and it is said in the unclean places of our realms that his power grows day by day. He is Belakor, the first prince of chaos and the dark master. He is the first and only demon prince to have ascended through the favor of the pantheon of the four original chaos gods, gifting him a certain amount of autonomy to enact his subtle realm and century spanning schemes. He is the dark father of the cursed skies spreading chaotic pollution through the heavens, weakening the ability of slain Stormcast Eternals to return to High Azir to be reforged, robbing them of their immortality. He is said to be older than Archaon, older than the realms, and from a time long before record. We may delve deeper into his origins one day, but for now, we speak of his mortal followers. They are known simply as the Chaos Legionnaires, and at first glance they resemble other worshippers of the Ruinous Powers. They wield heavy, cursed iron weapons, and clad themselves in armors, emblazoned with leering demonic faces. Yet these are not the images of dark minor spirits, but icons of Belakor, marks of allegiance hidden in plain sight. Legionnaire cohorts lurk at the periphery of Archeon's campaigns, waging war through deception while identifying warriors they believe will be receptive to their master's cause. Gradually, they inveigle themselves into the confidence of these allies, forming hidden cults, and warrior fraternities to spread the word of Belakor. If ancient texts are to be believed, they bear some little similarity to the forgotten god known once as Malal, representing the inevitable self-destructive nature of chaos itself. Yet unlike this god, we have no indication that Belakor seeks to destroy chaos, but rather harness its power to his own dark ends. The Chaos Legionnaires and other followers of Belakor adhere to what has become known as the Dark Creed. It preaches that Archaon is a false king, merely a petty lord propped up by arcane trinkets. Belakor, by contrast, is superior in every way, having achieved apotheosis through the favour of all four ruinous powers, and is but a single step removed from the pantheon itself. Such words are dangerous to share indeed, especially given the volatile nature of many who would find themselves in, and are able to survive, Archaon's war camps. These dangerous little truths are revealed sparingly, and should they fall on deaf ears, the Legionnaires are ever ready to stamp out the spark of violent retribution as it appears. However, for many, and increasingly so, these alluring words are enlightening and they become ensnared in the Dark Master's machinations. For beings aligned to a power described literally as Chaos, the cohorts of Belakor's mortal warriors are notably well-structured. 
Each legionnaire cohort is ruled by an ambitious leader known as a decuriarch, tasked with growing Bellacor's secret army and seeking glory in the new order guaranteed on the Dark Master's ascension. Below the decuriarch lie a range of warrior types, named predominantly for their martial preference and armaments. The horn shields fight with hand weapon and shield, the horn helms, in addition to eye-catching helm adornments, favour two-handed weapons. A slight outlier to the ordered ranks are the mutandors. These are his few mortal followers to display visible mutations, such as cloven hooves, and they combine mortal skill with demonic power. Cells of multiple legionnaire cohorts are directed by centaurian marshals, clad in the trappings of the gladiator. These centaur-like hulking champions dominate the fighting pits of the Varenspire. For all their bestial ferocity, centaurian marshals are creatures of great cunning and subtlety. These hulks use the pit fights themselves as recruiting grounds, ripping warriors from the bloody sands of the pits under the guise of chattel claiming. Some they convince to join their cause with the power of words. Their dark intelligence simmering with conviction and sheer presence makes them persuasive indeed. Those that remain defiant are subdued with further violence, before even being forced to stare into the black burning eyes of an icon of the Dark Master, or experiencing a baptism of sorts under the tainted reins of the cursed skies. Regardless of which, it's said their remaining resolve melts away in moments. Above the Centaurian Marshals lurks a shadowy figure. This is Eternus, Blade of the First Prince, and the Spymaster orchestrating the Chaos Legionnaire's movements. Standing at Bellacor's side, Eternus is a warrior who crackles with black lightning and is whispered to his spread treachery deep into the Ever Chosen's ranks. Like venom in the bloodstream, Legionnaire cohorts constantly move amongst Archeon's hordes spreading their schismatic religion wherever the Everchosen's gaze does not fall, and swiftly culling any who might alert the Warlord to their endeavours. Throughout the era of the Beast, many eyes turned to the realm of Gur, and the rumours of the treasure-laden Narlwood. It is no surprise that Archeon's forces were amongst those to descend beneath those brutal bowels. As the Everchosen's lieutenants order supplicant warbands into the forest seeking the riches of the fabled Talaxis, those that aren't consumed by carnivorous flora, reptilian guardians, or sucking bogs, may be surprised to encounter cohorts of Chaos Legionnaires already present. The Legionnaires are gathering within the belligerent forest for a single dark purpose. They seek a specific treasure within the fabled ruin of Talaxis which in reality is a crashed void ship of the star-faring reptilian Seraphon. The Dark Master's shadowy scryings have revealed the existence of a relic known to the Seraphon as Teapox Diadem. Though he cares little for the lost gods of the Star Lizards, Bellacor knows that this particular deity is associated with the air, and an engine that bears his name may have some capacity to end the cursed skies should the Seraphon ever be able to activate it. As the Legionnaires increasingly cross paths with scattered remnants of Archeon's forces, a secondary benefit to this expedition has occurred. To survive the Narwood, any advantage must be seized, and other Chaos-worshipping warbands will grudgingly accept the Legionnaires' offer of aid. In doing so, the Dark Creed has been allowed to further take root. Through well-timed whispers and demonstrations of prowess, Legionnaires convince their allies of the power Bellacor offers, while ensuring that any who might resist meet their ends through sudden betrayals in the most perfect of environs to experience a swift, unexpected death. As new disciples are enlisted under the dark and screeching canopy of the Narwood, they are led to the hidden war camps of the Centaurian Marshals and initiated into the faith. The Dark Creed breeds a terrible zeal in its adherents, and the threat of Bellacor's ire is far greater than any foe's blade. The loyal to Bellacor are known as the First Legion, or the Legion of the First Prince, and in the blood-spattered shadows of the howling Narwood, an army masses growing stronger with each passing day.
would you like to know more?